Hey everyone, this is Robert Keats with goldsilverpros.com. It is Thursday, October 1st, 2020. And it looks like deliveries for gold in October are starting off with a big bang. So let's get into that data. Uh, we've reached right now 1905 gold, which is a nice little uptick back over uh, the critical support level of 1900 that we saw in 2011. Silver is also up to 2375, a little bit more modest gain. Uh, over the last couple of days, but pretty good nonetheless. Gold delivery started off with a bang. Uh, we have 6,442 deliveries being reported for September 30th. And if we go back here to the 28th and the 29th, we have about 30,000 open interest contracts roll over into October. And about one quarter of those came in as deliveries, very first delivery day. So that is a bang, that, that's really, really good. If we go to the metal issues report, this is a year to date delivery notices. We can see October starting off with a bang. It's actually at 12391 on this report, which means another 6,000 came in on a day which is not reported here. So the October one data should be an extra 6,000 according to this. So 12,391 deliveries for October. And the pattern holds where we had big delivery month, smaller delivery month, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger. So I expect October to be a very solid delivery month for both gold and silver uh, based upon that pattern, especially gold. Uh, so done very well, very early. And you can see here, deliveries are higher than the closed and open interest. That means more deliveries than there were overall open con paper contracts. Uh, so it means, uh, you know, we could have maybe 15,000 uh, contracts for delivery in October. We'll see what happens. But in, in a month, which is not a big delivery month, that's a pretty darn big number. And again, people are coming in and taking the gold off the futures market through these contracts and some of them being spots or same month or shadow contracts, if you will. And uh, that indicates people are wanting to get the gold off of the market. Let's see what's happened in silver. We can see 1,026 deliveries as of Wednesday, September 30th. If we roll back a couple of days, the, the open interest uh, for October coming into the month that rolled over from September is about 1,800, 1,700 contracts. So about 60% of those contracts were delivered on the first day. So if we go to the uh, metals issue report for silver, we will see how we're doing for the month as compared to previous months. And here we go. This is the column for silver down here. So again, big month, small month, big month in September, it looks like we could be setting up for a fairly decent month in October as well. Thinly traded month for silver in terms of open interest, but already about 60% of the contracts are open at the start of the month delivered on the first day. That, that's a whopping number. Again, people coming into the COMEX taking delivery of the metal. I'm sure a lot of this will still sit in the warehouse, but it'll be put in eligible and it will not be used for delivery. We've seen that on the charts, very razor thin in terms of registered gold for delivery. So I don't anticipate a whole lot of extra gold and silver being made available for delivery other than what's needed. So looking at the depository statistics, we can see in the Brinks, and we've seen this time and time again in the Brinks, who the, the people that have Brinks accounts are taking $224,000, I'm sorry, 224,000 ounces of gold out of eligible, and that's coming right off of the, the total depository statistics. Overall, we had uh, another 122,000 come out of Malka Emit, and 5,000 come out of Manfred Tordella for a total of about 108,000 taking off of the exchange uh, once it was delivered. Quite a bit of gold there, and if we go to silver, the numbers are even bigger. Brinks, there was an increase in 567,000 into registered uh, for delivery against contracts an additional 1.6 million in eligible. So gold's coming into Brinks. Depository, we also see uh, eligible uh, silver boosted by 1.1 million ounces in JP Morgan's depository, a subtraction of a million ounces in Manfred, Tordella, and Brooks. Uh, from eligible, meaning people just taking it straight off the COMEX. So we've seen a healthy amount come into the COMEX for futures delivery. Some come into storage and eligible, and some come right off the COMEX overall. 567,000 ounces come into registered for delivery against contracts. Um, and about 1.7 million come into eligible for a combined total of 2.3 million coming into the depository. I think some of those amounts, let's go back to this. Some of those amounts coming into eligible are probably gonna be for December delivery. It's probably anticipating a lot of contract deliveries for December. And so you see this starting to come onto the exchange eligible category. Maybe some of that will be made available for registered. We'll see how much. 
but definitely gold and silver coming off of the COMEX. Big delivery months for both gold and silver. Of course, we had a nice little price pop in gold. Right now, I believe it's trading at about 1905, but going back to the sharp chart, it's up again above the 1900 mark. We first got that uh, in July, and now it's popped up again. And if it stays above this line, it's a very bullish signal. Uh, either the second or third time it, it comes above a previous uh, support or resistance line and stays above it uh, for any length of time, that's usually a bullish sign. If it hits it three times, it's really bullish. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if it stays above that $1,900 mark. If it does, um, then that means we're, we're back in the, in the bull run for the gold price. Now, notice it hasn't approached the 50-day moving average. So this becomes the new resistance line above 1,900 for gold. If you see it past the 1,950 mark and stay above it, that's a good sign we're, we're in uh, the next permanent bull leg of, of the gold market. Same thing with silver. Uh, it's challenging the 2450. Remember that critical support line that I had drawn for you guys at 2450? We bounced up against it again, second time, went through and stayed and got up to 29. Then it came back down, but it didn't fall that much below 2450 and it challenged it again. And now it's about to challenge it a third time. Challenge once, challenge twice, challenge third. Given the silver deliveries, I expect it to punch through 2450 the third time. If it does, then the next resistance line is about 2608, 50-day moving average. And then after that, we could see another bull run in silver. We'll see what happens. Uh, healthier deliveries in gold than silver so far, but healthy deliveries in silver also. Uh, that's about it for the market report. I, I'm very encouraged by all this delivery in gold in a very thin month. There's, there's just not a whole lot of contracts trading here. If we get a lot of delivery in October, that's setting up for a really big December, by the way. Not much going on in November, really, in either contract. So November should be quiet. When it's quiet, a lot of times that means the price will range trade or come down somewhat, depending on if there's any delivery that comes in, you know, spot or shadow delivery the same month, or if somebody comes in with some paper trade, we'll see what happens in November. But so far in October, setting up really positively for both gold and silver. You can see it coming off the exchange or you can see it coming out of registered. So people accumulating some silver coming on, anticipating this December 20th, 131,000 open interest contracts. So very bullish, very bullish in October. It's good to see bullish on the deliveries. It means the price should continue to go up. There's a lot of interest in gold and silver right now. This is going to be a very short market update today. That's about all I have to say. Not a lot in the headlines. Of course, you have the presidential debates and some other things going on, but not a lot directly related to the gold price and not a lot to talk about. Remember, next week, I'm going to start for earnest on the cryptos. I write about a lot of things. I've been focusing on gold and silver lately, but I think I've covered it pretty well. I'll continue to cover it through October at least once a week or so as we have some news leading up to December, which should be the month of fireworks for the precious metals, I would imagine. Uh, but we're going to start covering some other topics. So we'll have a really nice presentation on Tuesday for the cryptocurrencies. I've done a lot of research on this over the years. I'm going to bring together a lot of that research and a couple of presentations next week. I really think you're going to like it. I think it'd be extremely enlightening. And it's going to pertain not only to the cryptocurrencies, but the oncoming, what we call the Great Reset, and what how the cryptocurrencies may be used in that Great, great Reset to replace some fiat currencies. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be a really interesting video series. I think you guys will get a lot out of it. Till next time, it's Robert Keens with goldsilverpros.com.